Once upon a time, there was a girl called Ruby. She was about five years old, and she had another friend called Robbie. And one day, they were both walking back home from school, and they bumped into Portia. She was running the other way, and she said, Here you go. I'll see you tomorrow. Ruby looked at Robbie and goes, What was that all about? And then she looked at her hand, and in her hand was a golden envelope with a name on the top of it. It said, Open quickly. So they both sat down on the bench, and it was a bit cold that day, but it wasn't wet, it was just a bit cold. And they both opened their golden envelopes and pulled out the card, which was full of glitter. The glitter sparkled and blew up into the wind and made a magical heart-shaped cloud. The sun was still shining, even though it was cold, and the sunlight sparkled off all these bits of glitter in the heart shape, and it went everywhere. It was rather cool. Can you read it? she said. Robbie wasn't sure, but Ruby could read it, and he said, You are invited to my grand's birthday. It's a special one because she's 100 years old and that means she's very, very old. You don't need to bring anything, just bring yourself because we're going to have a party with a buffet and a Disney movie. Oh yeah, that's my favourite things, said Ruby. I hope it's not a princess movie, said Robbie. I want to watch The Incredibles. I think they've got Incredibles 3 coming out. Whatever they've got on said Ruby. I'm really interested to meet this old woman. This old granny about a hundred. How old is a hundred anyways? And the two of them spent about five minutes trying to work it out. They were talking about their gran and talking about their mum and all this, but they couldn't really get anything bigger than about fifty-five. So it's quite hard to imagine what an old one hundred-year-old woman would look like. She might be in a wheelchair. She might be old and grey and walking sticks and all that kind of stuff. Oh my gosh. So anyway, they both made their way home and Ruby showed her mum the invitation and was, was like, right, that's great, let me just put it here on the mantelpiece. And they sat down for dinner. As usual, Ruby ate everything and her plate was spotless. After dinner, she had a quick shower, and she got ready for bed. She brushed her teeth, washed her face, put a nice pyjamas on, and then Daddy read her a book, and then she went to bed. The next day was Saturday, so she didn't go to school, but she was excited from as soon as she woke up. She bounced out of bed at 7 o'clock in the morning and was like, Can we go to this party now? Mum got out of bed and said, do you know what time it is? It's seven o'clock in the morning. Let's have a look at this invitation. Look, it says one o'clock. You want to go back to bed? Uh, not really. I think I'll make a card. So she got out her crayons and she got a big piece of paper and got the glue and the glitter and she made the most fantastic birthday card I think anybody has ever seen. She was very proud of it. However, it did take her about three hours, and by the time she'd finished, she was a bit hungry. She had a big breakfast and a glass of milk. And then, it was just about time to get in the car and go to the party. Mum drove, and Mum was a bit worried that she didn't have a present, so they stopped off at the shop, and they bought some chocolates, a big box of chocolates. But Ruby was worried that Somebody who was a hundred maybe didn't have any teeth to eat in the chocolates like that. Maybe, said Mum. But what else? I know my granddad likes toffees, but he hasn't got any teeth now, so I'm not sure if this woman will like toffees, because if she's a hundred, she might not have any teeth. Oh, the mind boggles. So anyway, they settled on their chocolates, and they got back in the car and drove up the windy road to the house 
It was the first time Ruby had been to the house. And it was quite a big house. Look at that car in the garage. It's as shiny as the sun. She got out the car with a nice dress and the chocolates. And she walked to the house and pressed the doorbell. And she could hear the ding, dong, dong. Echoing through the huge house. Then she heard the footsteps on the floorboards and the giggling and the door swung wide open and all her friends were there. Come on, let's go. Ruby gave the chocolates to her friend's mum and they ran into the big kitchen and there in front of her was plates and plates and plates and plates and plates full of food. She was so excited. Help yourself. I what you want. Do you want some juice? Do you want some, do you want some pop? Or do you want some milk? I'll have everything, please. And she had two handfuls of plates. And on the plates were all kinds of food, like steak and lobster and cookies and cream and cheese and biscuits and broccoli and cauliflower and chips. And did I say chocolates? Yeah, he had everything on them. And the friends just enjoyed eating that for about an hour until they were ready for the movie. And Ruby was like, where is the birthday girl? I mean the birthday woman. I mean birthday grandma. I mean the birthday 100-year-old. And her friend said, she's over there on the sofa. So she held the friend's hand and went to meet this grandma. Before she got to meet the grandma, she said to her friend, What should I call your grandma? Her name's Margarita. Margarita, she said, with bursting out into laughter. That's a pizza's name. Yeah, that's right. But you got to think, she's a hundred years old. They didn't have Margarita pizzas a hundred years ago. That was just a name. All right. It's a bit funny, isn't it? Anyway, she said, Here you go. Gran, this is my friend Ruby. Hello, Mrs. Margarita. Just call me Margie, said the grandma. Ruby, who's got very sharp eyes, looked the old woman up and down. I thought, she doesn't look like a hundred years old. In fact, she looks a bit older, just a bit older than my mum. This old woman, who was really a hundred years old, had curly, curly blonde hair. She might have dyed it a different colour, but it was quite shiny. She had high cheekbones and thin lips. Her lips were red, with with lipstick, and she had nice eyebrows that were quite pointy. Her eyes were quite sharp as well, and very bright, and she looked really deep into Ruby's eyes and smiled. She had very white teeth, And she looked, and her hands were very, well, they looked a bit old, but her fingers were long and slim, and she had really bright red nail varnish on. I like your nail varnish, said Ruby. Why, thank you. I've had this one for quite a while. It was a gift. Now then, girls, are you ready for this movie? Yes, Gran. And so all the friends sat on the sofa, and next to the sofa. And Mum closed the curtains and turned the light off, and the movie began. Robbie sighed when he saw that it was a princess movie, and he's like, Do I have to watch this? Because I thought it was The Incredibles. Yes, you do, said the, said the old gran. So he did, and actually enjoyed it. Anyway, the story was about a little girl who used to work... In the dungeons and under the stairs and in the house, cleaning and cooking and doing all the work. And every day she got covered in soot. She got covered in cinders, which was the black soot. And she was always, like, dirty. And the stepmother and the stepsister called her Cinder. Cinderella. And she was very, very polite and she was very, very beautiful. But she was very, very poor. And on one day... As she was singing 
and she was crying as well. And as her sisters were getting ready to go to the prince's ball held by the king in his castle, Cinderella listened to them chuckling and putting on the dresses in the room that was locked with no light, and she cried. In fact, she sung herself to sleep. She cried herself to sleep. She was awoken by a bright, shining light, and she couldn't believe it because there was no light coming down in this room. And it was her fairy godmother flying around with big rosy cheeks going, I'm going to make you a carriage from a pumpkin and a horse is from the mice and all these things that were really, really nice. She turned the terrible clothes into a beautiful dress, gave her some glass slippers that would not break even though she was running on the road. And there was a the horses were driving themselves. Anyway, the fairy godmother, who was quite nice, said, Go in this to the ball and meet the prince. But you must be back by twelve. Because there's always a condition to the fairy godmother's presence, no matter what. Yes, fairy godmother, said Cinderella. And she went, and she had a great time, and she danced with the prince. And just as the clock was striking twelve, she cried, I've got to go. And the prince said, no. But she left. And as she was running home, she fell and left one of her slippers. And she was in such a hurry to get back before the clock struck the last point of twelve that she left it. And she just made it home in time before her clothes transformed back into dirty rags carriage turned back into a pumpkin and the horses turned back into mice you don't know but the mice didn't really want to be mice again after being beautiful white horses but that's what happened well the movie came to an end after the princess Cinderella married the prince and they lived happily ever after in the big castle and all the children were clapping when it came to an end But in the room, there were two people that didn't look happy. Of course, one of them was Robbie, who was thinking about The Incredibles. And he went up to get some more pizza from the table. And they turned around and they saw that the gran, the 100-year-old gran, was looking a bit sad or a bit upset or a bit angry. What's wrong, said Ruby. Do you not like the movie? I did like the movie, said the old gran. But you know what? It's not true. I don't know why it's filling your girl's head with all this rubbish about princesses. <gasps> what do you mean? said Ruby. Well, said the gran, come with me and I'll tell you the truth about fairies and the princesses. So Ruby and her friends and the old grandma went into the next room grandma sat in a rocking chair and all the other children sat on the floor and she started to tell the story of when she was younger I know this is not the way princesses are looks said the grandma because I was a princess in fact I was as poor as Cinderella And the fairy godmother didn't zoom into my room like that beautiful fairy light. She whispered in my ear. Really? And she didn't give me all these pumpkins turning into carriages. You know what she gave me? One day I woke up with the most magical beautiful nail varnish and makeup that anyone had ever seen. And she gave me some shoes with some glitter and sparkle on that were just absolutely magical. But she didn't have a wand and she didn't tell me what was going on. But I had to listen very, very carefully. And I listened. And what I heard was the nail varnish was magic. And I had to listen. Because if I shouted or screamed, even the loudest bit, 
and especially if I cried without being hurt, or if I cried for no reason and the tears ran down my face or dripped onto my nail varnish, it would be gone and the magic spell would be broken forever. So that's the story. And so these magic nail varnish let me make the most beautiful pictures. I won so many prizes in the brownies. I got prizes for tying knots and making things out of wood, making a fire. And it was so special. I got into all the competitions and won all the first prizes for my drawing and painting and art. And then, one day, as I was walking down the road, there was a doggy and it pooped right in front of me. The old woman across the road shouted, Pick it up! And I shouted, It's not my dog! I said, I don't care! I said, Get lost! And I screamed a bit louder. And then, in a puff of glitter, shaped like a heart, all my nail varnish and makeup and even the glitter on my shoes disappeared. The next day I couldn't draw pictures like before and I couldn't tie knots and I couldn't make things from wood and I didn't win any more prizes. Well, I did win a second prize. But anyway, the truth of the matter is, I wasted it. I listened very carefully, but still, I lost my magic. The grandma looked very sad, and Ruby saw a tear roll down the grandma's cheek and drop onto the back of her hand. Ruby could see that she was quite sad, and so she put her hand on her shoulder and said, don't worry, you'll be all right. The grandma looked up. I know, and so will you. You see, all little girls have a little fairy godmother, and all little girls get presents now and then. And you see, it's not like the movies where they're all telling you what to do and telling you your present and changing things in like magic. No, you do get presents and you do get things, but you have to listen and you have to really, really listen to what's going on. And then you can know how to use the magic. What do you mean? Well, like Cinderella got a beautiful dress that was made from rags and she went to the castle where there's no castles anymore. There's no kings anymore, really. The world's changed, and the princesses have changed as well. So you'll see, you might just get a bike, which could be magic. You might go to a really nice restaurant with your family, which might be magic. You might get something else. Whatever happens, there'll be things that come into your life that are really great. And it's your job to listen And listen really carefully to your mum or your dad or to your teacher or to somebody right after you get those things because they'll tell you how to keep your magic, how to not to break the spell from the magic in those things. The grandma looked even sadder as she said the next thing. She said, I really did listen. And after I got my magic nail varnish, I knew that I shouldn't have screamed or shouted or done that thing, but it happened. And that's that, she said. And she smiled again. She said, because, you see, I'm a hundred and I've lived a long life and I'm very, very happy. And I've had lots of kids and all that kind of stuff. So magic's not the end. magic's not everything, you know. And just then, Ruby looked down to see that her varnish, her nail varnish, was now pink, not red. And it had green stripes on it. And she thought, when did she have time to change that? And she looked up, and her hair, well, I don't think it was as curly as it was before, but it was still blonde. 
And she had different kind of eyelashes on. Hmm, said Ruby, maybe you didn't lose all that magic after all. And so anyway, they played a game of cards and they all went to finish off the pizza and the chips and the biscuits and everything from the buffet. And they had a play in the garden. And they all talked about how they wanted to be a princess and how they were all going to be marrying a prince in a castle. And again the grandma said, I told you there's no princess, there's no princes in the castles. When was the last time you saw a castle with a prince? Uh, I saw Aunt Telly. Yeah, well, that's probably not a real one. And so, they played like that all day. And the old woman told them story after story after story of when she was a princess and of when she wasn't a princess. And both stories were equally as exciting, equally interesting. But the story of when she had a magic... Well, that was the best one. It was the most exciting and the most interesting. And so, as the sun went down, all the children went back home. And they were all very full, and the children's mummy and daddy were very happy because the kids were just ready for bed. And so they all got ready for bed. And they all, the girls anyways, they all had a special dream and in that dream they found that they were all princesses and that they all had a fairy godmother even though maybe they couldn't see it and they all kind of promised themselves that they would listen and try and find out what they should do every time they get some kind of present or something they're grateful for in their life like a bit of candy, or a new book, or some new clothes, or even a big bike, or just time with your family, which is so special and important. And they all look forward to the birthdays, because that's when they could test it out and see whether it was going to happen. And they all tried very, very hard. And that's the end of the story for the little girl on her birthday. Happy birthday, Ruby.